Actually, no. Um, this, this same exact thing does not happen to men all over the world, and I'll explain why. Great, but before you do, hey, what's up everyone? Let me read what that guy said in his comment. These same exact things happen to men all over the world. We experience emotions just as deeply, we just rarely express them outwardly. I spent this entire video explaining how the patriarchy affects women getting into relationships in adulthood from expectations that were placed on them from childhood. And I like went in depth and I said specifically that I'm not saying men can't experience heartbreak because that's just the human condition to love things a lot and lose them and be heartbroken. However, with women in a heterosexual relationship, there is an entirely separate layer of expectations. And it's not something that men experience um, where you have all of these unspoken rules to adhere to to make yourself more palatable and you rip parts of yourself out and you throw them away and you bury them and you push them back to make yourself more desirable and then when he leaves when he cheats on you when he betrays you when he breaks up with you all of those parts are just missing and you're just an empty like vessel of the person that you used to be the person that had hobbies that had friends that had relationships and you're nothing the power dynamic in a heterosexual relationship really adds to this because it is from when we're five years old okay the boy is going to ask you out. The boy is the one that's going to make the first move. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. You're just going to be there. You're just going to be for him. And that is where your value is placed for your entire life, being there for him. Oh, you wonderful lunatic. This is what years and years of brainwashing has done to them. They completely lost the ability to think for themselves and they just repeat the same message others told them to say. Not to mention also that it keeps them constantly in a victim mindset. You can't keep fighting a fight that is not there. So you need to make sure it's still there, at least in the mind of a few. You were not just there, princess. You were there on a higher level. You were not a victim for being there and you were never considered less either. Yes, it was always a man's job to pursue you, to court you, to chase you because you are always put on a higher level you are put on a pedestal you were the prize you were the trophy men had to go over their way just for you to look at them you never had to do any of that you never had to be being said no you never had to deal with rejection you want to change all that because you're fighting the quote-unquote good fight you're fighting the patriarchy go ahead in fact this is what we have today so congratulations i guess would be in order you did manage to play yourself and no everything you've said has nothing to do with how men experience emotion why you should date to marry coming from an ex-liberal choice feminist it saddens me to see that we live in a society so smothered by hookup culture and texting being the biggest indication that someone's interested in you and as a woman i'm confident that at some point you were sold this idea that this lifestyle of constantly hooking up and sexual promiscuity is empowering but if it's so empowering why do you always feel so alone why are you constantly being mistreated why do you put so much effort into your appearance just to not be satisfied when a guy only compliments you for your looks? Here's a really obvious answer. Hookup culture doesn't care if you're smart, compassionate, admirable. Doesn't care if you donate to charity or take care of loved ones. The entire purpose is to empower you only through your appearance. And something that shallow is not going to make you feel good long term. And I know you feel like this because I used to feel like that. I'm not really sure what opinions are you talking about, but uh, I mean, sure. And it doesn't matter now anyway, because no one cares, especially men. You wanted your hookup culture, now you got it. You felt empowered by being promiscuous. Now we kind of also want to be empowered by banging as many of you as we can. No, I mean, oh, what a big surprise. The girl who did hookups for years now want to date for marriage. Oh, well, <laughs> best of luck with that. Now this might shock you because I also thought the same for a very, very long time Until. that the people who created feminism actually were nice people who wanted the best for everyone and just wanted equality. Okay, here's what, what really happened. So Kate Millett, she was an American feminist author and artist. Uh, she is the founder of the National Organization for Women. Her sister, Mallory, was invited to one of the first meetings that established the National Organization for Women. So this is a feminist group that has been around since the start of the feminist movement, and they basically pioneered the whole movement. 
At this meeting, they gathered around a large table with Kate Millett, the chairperson, and she opened the meeting with the following back and forth recitation. So this is how the beginning of the meeting went. Why are we here today, she asked. To make revolution, they answered. What kind of revolution? The cultural revolution. How do we make cultural revolution? By destroying the American family. How do we destroy the family? By destroying the American patriarch. And how do we destroy the American patriarch? By taking away his power. And how do we do that? By destroying monogamy. And how do we destroy monogamy? By promoting promiscuity, eroticism, prostitution, and homosexuality. Well, wow. Come on. So this proceeded with a long discussion on how to advance these goals by establishing the National Organization of Women. A uh, leader's sister says, it was clear they desired nothing less than the utter deconstruction of Western society. All right, this is just what it's come to now, the dating world. Hot single women are taking to the streets and advertising on their handmade cardboard signs. 29-year-old Carolina Geddes, model, has, um, has started her own ad campaign. I'm thinking this may be bigger than Bumble. And I say, you go, girl. We're all interested in wanting to know how this all turns out for you. Hope you find your Mr. Darcy. I just know that I am nostalgic for the times where, you know, smoky bar and too much alcohol decided my man future. Oh, no, she's already taken now. So, ah, well, what are you going to do? That poor soul probably still believes in love, loyalty, marriage. I wonder if you ever heard of no fault divorce. The you're not going to find the love of your life tree. in a club popping a bottle. Absolutely not. Unless you're giving me a slice of pizza, I don't want to hear it. The love of your life could be right in front of you eating you pizza and you wouldn't even know it. Yeah, you wouldn't even know it. Oh, you know what I want? A healed hey, what's, man. What, what, what's Shut your, up. What's Shut up. No, no, what's no, your Instagram? He looks like a nice guy. Oh. Nice guy. Oh. 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 Would you date him? I don't why make not? enough money for him. How the f*** do you know that I like money? I can tell. I'll tell you this right now. I'll you. you ain't wrong. <laughs> the love of your life can be in front of you right now feeding you pizza. She never even heard that part. I guess you don't hear stuff when you're hungry. And she has a nice kick for maybe a 14 year old, but still, I mean, she did say thank you for that slice of pizza, right? Anyway, this is gonna be it for today. As always, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.